So now that we have the offsets for where we want our camera to be, let's go ahead and position it that way. So I'm going to come up here and make a few public variables. Now we're going to get rid of these when we create our camera script. But for now, we'll just add them up here. So we're going to have a public. They're both going to be floats. And we're just going to call it Z offset. And we'll also make a float for the Y offset. We could have actually just made them constants. I didn't. I'm just going to put them here. And the Z offset was equal to negative 2.5. And the Y offset was equal to 2.5. Uh, we'll also need the rotation. And that was on the X. So we're just going to make a public float. We'll call it X rot offset. And down here, X rot offset was equal to 22.5. So now in our main camera, we'll just create a new vector 3. Then I'm going to copy this line because we're going to be using it a bit. We'll just say dot x, comma, paste it again, dot y, plus the y offset, and the dot z position plus the z offset. Close that off. Then we'll also want to adjust its rotation. Now initially we're just going to have it rotate towards the player to be pointing at his backside. So it's just simply main camera dot transform dot rotate and then enter the, the rotation on each axis you want. So we can just use the X rot offset for the X axis. Then for the Y and the Z we're not rotating at all so we'll just use zeros. So let's save that off and go look. So we'll hit play, and there we go. We notice it's gone up two and a half, back two and a half, and it's rotated 22 and a half. And we're looking at his backside. So now let's start populating his character data with the data we want. So we're going to want to get a reference to his player character script. We'll just make a private variable of player character. And we're going to call this PC script. Then in our start function, we already have the PC object we want, so we just want to get the script component of that. So we'll just say PC script is equal to underscore PC dot get component and the component we're after. That would be a player character. So now we have a reference to his script. Let's create a function that will actually populate his values with it. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to get rid of the update for now. And I'm just going to call it, it's going to be public, void load character. And in this function, we're just going to simply want to call the load character data function from our game settings. And we already actually have that done over here, except we're saving. We can actually just cut and paste this right in and just change the name. So I'm just going to go over here, paste it in. We're not going to be calling update. We won't be saving character data, we'll be loading. And we'll make sure this is right. 
Yes, except here again. We're loading, not saving. So we'll just do load character data. Now, if we go back to Unity and start our scene back up, we'll notice we don't actually have an instance of our game settings. In order to get that, there's a couple ways we can do it. One, we can go into our scenes folder. Let's go to character generator. Save the current scene. Now this is the scene that creates the game settings. And it makes sure that it's persistent from level to level. So if we quickly just zip through this level. We'll notice we go on to the next level and the game settings comes with it. So if we want the game settings to traverse from to our new level, we'll have to go up to our build settings at our current level. I'm actually going to move it up above the other one. I'm actually just going to get rid of that one because I won't be using that one anymore. That was just an example. And we'll also have to go into the script, which was our character generator, and change the level we're going to load. And we'll call this level one. So now if we go back into Unity, start it back up, spend all of our points again, then enter our name. We go on to level one and we notice that it's there now. Well, I don't want to keep going back to that character generation screen to uh, make spend all of our points and put our name in. And I don't really want to make a bunch of edits to it so I can just skip through it. So what I'm going to do is just go to level one. Well, actually there's a couple ways. We can just make it a prefab. So if we go back to character generator, we could just make this a prefab and go back into level one and drag it in. And I am going to make it a prefab actually. So let's go down to prefabs, create, prefab, and I'll call this game settings. Go into your character generator and take the game settings and drag it down. Then go back to level one. I'll ask you if you want to save. Make sure you do. And then in our game master script, I'm going to add another public reference to that game settings prefab. So public game object. And I'm just going to call it game settings. Now we save it go back to our game master game object we now have a prefab for it or a variable exposed for it we'll just drag the prefab on and down here we're just going to instantiate it we're going to check to see if it exists if it doesn't exist we're going to create one and if it does exist we won't so let's make a temporary variable for it this would be a game object I'm just going to call it GS for game settings equals game object dot find and the name we're looking for which is game settings so I'm just actually going to cut and paste this in back to level one So now the check to see if game settings exists. So we'll say if GS is equal to null. So what we're basically saying there is if it doesn't exist, we're going to instantiate it. Instantiate our game settings game object, which is our prefab. I'm just going to stick it, stick it at vector zero. Or vector three zero and quaternion identity. And let's also rename it to make sure it's named properly. 